Okay, <clears throat> I want to give um, a short rundown on what local normalization in Pixel Sight is, what it isn't, and what you should use it for. <coughs> so, um, the idea of local normalization is, well, that you reject outliers in some way. So it's a form of a rejection uh, process in Pixel Sight that will happen before the integration. It gives you a bit more flexibility on the integration itself, ultimately. Um, yeah, um, so I want to show you a few uh, examples how to use local normalization and when to uh, apply it. So I have here my data on M33 and uh, I opened it in, in Blink. And what I did is here apply a histogram transformation to all images so they are looking all the same. So if I like go through them now, <coughs> you will see that the image will degrade over time. There are some clouds and some images, there are some trails, and then about here ish, high clouds start to form. The SNR goes down. Uh, a bit of dew starts to form on my lens as well and uh, freezes up. And ultimately, nothing is left. So if I go into uh, through that quickly, you will see that very well, especially towards the, towards the end. So I have uh, the first thing that you have to do when you do local normalization is you have to find the frame that has the least issues in terms of background. So if I would go through that, in the end, I can't use any of those because all of them have a very bad SNR. So it's going to be somewhere where my lens wasn't frozen, where no clouds were, and where the background is pretty even. So looking through this, this one uh, looks about fine. This one has huge clouds on it, as you can see. This one looks about fine as well. This one as well. This one again has hu a huge cloud. This gets even worse. And after that, I get a few frames that are pretty decent. <coughs> so it it's going to be either this or this frame that I'll be use, uh, using it as a reference. OK, <clears throat> sorry. So I got the local normalization uh, process open here already. And I selected one of that frame that I considered good as a reference image. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a few example frames that I know were not good, like this one, like this one, like this one, and ultimately something like this one. And I'm going to show you how local normalization applies to each of those images. So if I would reset and run it normally on that image. <coughs> you, <coughs> oh, God damn it, sorry. <coughs> oh, I'm dying over here. Uh, you will see that, that it will make it very dark. And if you compare the LN scale, it looks completely different. So that's like the cloud that's going to be removed and stuff like that. If I increase it, uh, uh, to stretch it again, it looks pretty normal. So if we compare to before, this is what you use local normalization for. So you can get rid of uneven gradients and replace them with 
something that you know is a decent result. So let's try it on a few more images and see what we, uh, what we get to. So the other image with that huge gradient, again, applying the same <coughs> applying the same values, stretching it, and it looks fine. So if I would stack this, I would have to reject no gradients over here. And this one has a more uneven gradient with a cloud going through that image. Apply. Wait a second. OK, you see the offset is terribly off. And again, it removed the whole cloud. No problem at all. And here we have a very low SNR image that is from where my lens was mostly frozen up. So I'm going to apply this here as well and see what we get. OK, as you see, from that offset calculations, the center is way brighter on the reference image than it was on non-reference. And also you can see, well, there's kind of a bit of a gradient going on uh, that it might come actually from the reference image. But that's not too bad, because if all gradients are equal, you can uh, DBE them away without big issues. And we stretch it, and oops, uh, when you look at this, well, it helped a bit, of course. Uh, it's got a bit brighter. There will be less rejection going on. But the stars suddenly got a halo. So here, if I zoom out, it's terribly obvious. There are here halos, here, here, here. Basically, all large star groups have halos now. And <clears throat> this is something that you kind of want to avoid. And to avoid that, well, you can play around with reference threshold, target threshold, background limits, stuff like that. And you can also play around with scale. From my experience, um, the scale that I use, uh, if I increase the scale for that image, the large halos will go away. Or rather, will be improved significantly. And as you can see, the halos are pretty much gone. And the image uh, rather looks more like uh, the previous one, uh, like it should be. Like, of course, there's still well, this kind of gradient here that is removed on uh, the normalized image. There's this, uh, the center is a bit brighter because it was as well on uh, my reference image. And the background looks about fine. So for applying local normalization blindly on all your frames, <coughs> you have to try a few, uh, you have to try different things out. You have to try it on low SNR images. You have to try it on uh, good images to see if it changes. So for example, if I take like this image where I know this one is OK in terms of SNR, and I apply it, it should not change much, ideally. And the then plot will be mostly, well, not mostly, but mostly flat. Yeah. Not sure if this is actually better. Good example. Well, it is, it is kind of better. That's a very kind of low SNR image as well, for whatever reason. Oh, I took the wrong one. Oops. Um, give me a second. What did I even do here? Um, uh, yeah, it's this one here. <coughs> well, that's actually fine result then. Uh, when I take this one, this is like pretty close to my reference image. Not many changes should be 
going on between uh, BLN. Yeah, there's like a bit of a gradient that's gonna get removed, but otherwise it looks pretty much the same. So yeah, that's what you use uh, local normalization for. And uh, let me show you what happens if you use a bad reference frame. So if I were to use, for example, a reference frame <coughs> that has something like clouds in it, like this one, if I take this and use it as my reference, and then apply it to something that looks good already, like this uh, this frame. So I apply it. And you see uh, there's kind of this gradient going on and the kind of weird offset. And yeah, <laughs> so this is how you get clouds back in your image. And I, uh, ultimately, the sad thing is that um, you can have high SNR frames with clouds in them. So just going blindly by the image with the highest SNR is not a good idea. Because you could end up uh, local normalizing an image that has clouds in them, uh, using a reference that has clouds in them, or having like this uh, satellite trail. If I use that one, <coughs> it will well, it will project that satellite frame onto the grid frame, and you don't want that. And you don't want that gradient that gradient either. Okay, well, it kind of managed to reject that more or less, but it still it produced a gradient that is not something that you want. If you if I would use it with a smaller scale like thirty two or something, I think it kind of will adjust. Uh, well, maybe it won't. It really, ah, oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so here we go. You want to put satellite trails on all of your images? Well, just use an image with satellite trails as your reference. Great ideas overall. So yeah, that's what you kind of use uh, local normalization for. And <clears throat> it's very important that you go through all of your frames after you have regist registered them and select the best frame for uh, that you have visually. It's like it's not something that you can really determine with an algorithm because sometimes some frames look good from an algorithm perspective, but are not that good in uh, upon visual inspection. Like this frame will have a higher SNR than this one, but it's actually worse because you got, got the satellite trail going through it. I mean, I did a few times. Uh, I did stack a few times uh, satellite trails into my local analyzation. It was not a good idea. Yeah, so as I said, pick a good frame, <coughs> take it as a reference image, use a good scale, experiment on all of your images that you, or not all, on a few of your images that you have until you get a good uh, scale going on and uh, make sure that you get a good reference image going on. And then just uh, apply, uh, apply it to everything. And that will take a while, depending on how fast your computer is, uh, because local normalization is a very compute intensive process. And it can help you end up with a better stack than before. But it can help you end up with a worse stack as, as before as well, if you don't use it right. Uh, I hope that helped in some way. Um, thank you for watching and good luck.